Hey Jake, guess what time it is? It's time for another CMSIT Weekly. That's right, you know what? Today, today, yeah, yeah. Pink is bringing us in. Pink and Eminem, right? That's true. Yes. Do you know Eminem and I are, well that's another story. But yeah, we're yeah. like, we're like blood brothers. Uh-huh. We are like, anyway, what are we talking about today, Jake? We are talking about email. Email. You know, first I'd like to uh, say that this is uh, CMS. IT Weekly, it's our 18th. It is our 18th. It is our 18th. And yeah. I thought email was kind of kind of dead. I think it seems that a lot of people still seem to live in the world of email. Well, Tim, you could say email's dead. I just did to you, but um, to really, me. I mean, it's I, all. I, I see you on email. You, you email me even over the weekend. I do. You, you are on email. I at work at least two hours a day. On email, so don't tell me. It seems to be the way people like to communicate with us. It, it is a very powerful communication. Tool. It seems to be that way. So, uh, so why are we talking about email today then? If I mean, we know it's powerful, but what's the deal? Well, we're, we're looking at ways to manage email a little more efficiently. To use and manage mm -hmm. okay. it. Okay. It, it's overwhelming. Everyone, it, I mean, you, you want email to be dead? I, think, I because. Boom. I don't, email can be a nuisance. It can be a nuisance. You know, I've been uh, your way. I've been thinking about this, and uh, when I was on vacation, I, I found this cool tool. Uh, yes, you it's, did. it's called Nudgemail. I really like Nudgemail. There is no setup for Nudgemail. You just send it to Nudgemail, and it comes right back to you at any time that you say. And the cool thing is, you. What I understand is, you just put in when you want to receive it. At nudgemail.com. Correct. So while I was nudge on mail, yeah, document. yeah, exactly. So when I was on vacation and uh, I I checked my email on occasion mm -hmm. and I said, "Ooh, I really want to remember this," but I didn't want to deal with it right then. It could sit in your email box. Yep. It could sit in the inbox, and then it's going to get, get pushed buried. down. And I could delete others, but you know what? That means I'm actually touching my email on vacation, and I didn't really want to do a whole lot of that. Mm -hmm. But I did want to check in, so I would nudge it to Monday. So I just typed in forward. Okay, so I mm -hmm. forward Monday at nudgemail.com send, and it was done. Brilliant. Monday morning, 6.30 in the morning, I walk in, boom, 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 my email box starts filling up with everything that I nudged. You can nudge it to Tuesday. You can nudge it to 10 minutes from now. You just put in 10 minutes, and it will come back to you in 10 minutes. It's a way to manage and stay on top of your email. You don't want to deal with it right now, but you want to get to it. Now, there's one, there's one downside. What's that say? Uh, and no attachments. Yes. It does not accept attachments. No, which you can't forward attachments. Might, might kind of dangerous. Thing. Might be a good thing that you don't want to uh, you don't want to send your attachments out somewhere else. But right. you're saying dangerous because why? Well, if you forward to Nudge Mail a document that has an attachment, it's going to bring the, the, the email back to you. Right? It's going to bring it back to you later. Goal. However, to however, it's not going to bring the attachment with it. So the yeah. attachment gets stripped away. So you, you forward something on to Nudgemail, and in the process, you delete it from your inbox, so you're not dealing with it yet, and you don't have to worry about it. But that attachment will be gone as well. Great. I, I've, I've been using Nudgemail for probably about a month now. Uh, I use it on and off. It's got its place. Yeah. And so I throw it out there for, for others to try to... The beautiful thing, no setup. Right now... Right. You can go to your email, forward, whatever, at nudge, and it will come, nudgemail.com. Right. Yes, you do have to go to the website and set up your no, account. No, you don't. No, you don't. You, you do not. You have to send an email. No, you it. don't. None at all. None at all. Right now, you can go to CMS EdTech, and you can send a nudge mail. There's no setup. Just write a forward. Interesting. Boom. No, I mean, it is... It just works. It just works. It now, Jake, a lot of people use the Gmail. The Gmail the, is nice. The Gmail. I like the Gmail. I, I, have, I have a Gmail. You've got a Gmail. We all got Gmail. It sounds like a song. And, uh, and Gmail's great, and it offers us some great tips and tools that we can use. I, yes, it does. We, we've been playing with the tool. Show us, show us this, this tip well, you've been working with. So having one email for every purpose is kind of the goal, right? So you can, you can deal with everything by logging into this one that email is, That is the goal. So... Gmail has this really cool trick. You can use a plus or a period in your email address to modify it 
and it will still come to your email address. I love it. So, so plus works at the end. Right. Okay. So so take us through through an example real so fast. So quick, um, just let's use firstlast at gmail dot com. All right. Just, do you, just do a you own generic that? account. Do you own, do you own firstlast? Actually, um, I do. Not. <laughs> I don't. Know. All right. So you can take the firstlast at gmail dot com. If you put a plus one after firstlast at gmail dot com, it still goes to the, the, the first, first last, last account plus two would also go there. So you're, you're saying just like nudge mail, I don't have to set up first last plus one. I don't have to register first first last plus take, one. Take whatever name you've registered and just add plus, plus. whatever else you want to write. So if, anything else you want to if use. If my Gmail was Timothy Smith, I could put Timothy Smith plus one right now in a company's email address and it would come to Timothy Smith at Gmail. Exactly. Wonderful. Can I use anything? You can use anything you want. Numbers, symbols, yeah. capital, upper. Exactly. Anything wow. we want. We actually tested this with symbols and letters of all varieties. So works just fine. Sweet. Now you mentioned periods. You can put a period anywhere within your name. So even if I set up my name with periods, I probably own the one without periods. Yes. Interesting. So you could do first dot last, or you could put dots in between every letters. It will still get to you with, with your Gmail account. Wow. This is pretty cool. This opens up. Uh, would you like to show us a quick example here? Yes. On, on the so, screen, for those of you who follow along on the, on the podcast, we've got an email that, was, that we set up an account with, right? Yes. We set up an account for a, another web service known as Symbolu, and it sent us a verification that we created an account. and the verification went to our CMS EdTech plus two. Like it. So the plus two like it. to show it's, it's a second account that we created and that, that plus two helps us to understand that and Symbolu allowed us to create two accounts. Very cool. So uh, one email, multiple purposes, mm -hmm. one email and I can have as many pluses as I want after that. And the great thing is you can create rules to send anything that has the plus one or plus two in into a, a, a collection, yeah. so how Gmail calls it, think yeah. folder, and um, it will it will store there, so you can easily manage all these different emails that are coming, you know, based this, on different information that you gave. This brings up a, a great thing that you you were also dealing with earlier this uh, this past week of email aliases. Yes, we go to a bunch of companies, um, maybe you know. Maybe you want some information from the company, mm -hmm. but you don't really want them to have your real email address. Right. So taking first last, we could do first last plus CO for company. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would create basically an alias. And I would always want to use first last plus CO whenever I sign up for something. And then so it, it helps me kind of filter. Yeah. Then you, yeah, you set that, that filter rule so that it goes into a collection called companies. And then if you want to see what companies are sending you, you go there. If you don't want to be bothered by it, because most of the time we don't want to be bothered by what companies are trying to sell us, yeah. you avoid it. So the beauty here, too, is if they ever sell that email list, they've not sold your real email. I like it. So that's a uh, email aliases. You know, I was going to say uh, I have a mobile me account, which is through Macintosh. Same thing. You can set up alias accounts. So uh, we bring this up to look at your company, uh, whatever it is your email provider. Or maybe you don't use Gmail or mobile me. Maybe you use uh, Roadrunner. See if there is an alias option. So you set up a an account, or you set up a different email that comes to the real email, and. Uh, it's, it's an alias. Yeah, and now the, the great thing is that there's a lot of new services like Nudgemail we mentioned yeah. that are coming out and recognizing the, the issues with email and just the, the overload that we're experiencing. <sighs> and uh, yes. that's the last thing we really want to talk about is how to balance email and really make sure that we do things right. You know, we carry our, our devices around. I've got my iPhone, my iPod, my Blackberry, and it's buzzing. It buzzes all day. Bzz, 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 saying I've got an email. you got to check that email. I've got to check the email. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Check it, check it, woo! Check, check email! <laughs> the whole point of email is to allow asynchronous communication. You don't what? Have what? To, a what? Asynchronous. asynchronous. You don't have to reply immediately. Okay. You have to reply within 24 hours. Use for, nudge for mail CMS, to give a quick CMS reply mail. and then you'll get to so, the big reveal later. But. On the digital citizenship side, 
it's this false productivity. You know, there's yes. a Mashable article. We, we've put this Mashable article into uh, the links here. We'll throw it up for those of you who come to the wiki later. And it talks about false productivity. You think you're getting work done, but it's really hindering your work. You gotta. You you mentioned this. You gotta set time constraints. I'm yes. gonna do email for 30 minutes and then move on to other stuff. Yeah. I think that's important. And also check set boundaries. Yeah. When are you going to check your email? Yeah. Don't, don't driving. Uh, driving is not a good time. That, that's that's really I heard people a bad bad decision. No. Yes. It is. It is a bad decision. Check your email when you have the ability to really focus on it and give a good reply or at least give a reply that says, I got it, I'm going to do something with it later and send it to Nudge or some other way that you want to, to mark that you're going to get back to this. Yeah, I like that. Uh, and the time constraints as well. Make sure that you're, you're only spending so many minutes, or hours yep. within your day and even establish what minutes or hours of the day you're going to check email How? and stick to it. Definitely. You're going to check it at 8 o'clock and not check it again until 4 and that's it. Yeah. Those are the times you're going to use your email. Yeah. And, uh, and if you're a school, school teacher, if you're in the classroom, uh, definitely let your administrators let those know that, hey, these are the times that I'm checking email. Because I know sometimes yeah. administrators send email out and they want something back right away. I think it's, it's part of our digital citizenship is to express. And if you're an administrator, express what you expect from your teachers. You've got you to gotta put that out there. Uh, the, the whole purpose of email is to be asynchronous right. so that you, you don't have to respond immediately. You just yeah. got to yeah. understand that. So, you know, email is definitely still around. We uh, have some things that we need to uh, remember about email. Uh, but let's, let's use some of these tips and tools and, and things to, to help manage our email a little better. Yep. Nudge mail. Uh, the, just send it off. Mm -hmm. It comes back to you. It's great. The Gmail tip, it's a nice one. It, it works in a couple different ways. You can have as many different emails as you want connected to your real one, which helps right. you set up alias emails. Yeah, and, and just look for that balance with email. Start critically assess yourself. Are you, are you using email productively, or is it just to take the time away from your life? So, With that, that Jake, I say I'm not going to back down, buddy. I'm out. All right.